This is chapter 3 selections, programming exercise 14, game, heads, or tails. So we're going to write a program that lets the user guess whether the flip of a coin results in heads or tails. The program randomly generates an integer 0 or 1, which represents head or tail. The program prompts the user to enter a guess and reports whether a guess is correct or incorrect. 0 or 1, heads or tail. So in this program, we're going to say 0 represents tail, 1 represents heads. So when we ask the user, guess heads or tail, we're not going to ask them to enter the string heads or tail. We're going to say, hey, enter 0, which represents tail, 1, which represents head. And same with the coin flip. We're going to randomly generate a number between 0 and 1, which will simulate the coin flip. And if the number generates 0, then, then that means the coin flips a tail. And if the random number generator generates a 1, that means it represents a head. And we're going to take that. We're going to take the user input 0 or 1, and we're going to compare with the coin flip, which is the random number generator that generates 0 and 1. And if the user input matches the coin flip 0 to 0, 1 to 1, then their guess is correct. Otherwise, it is incorrect. So let's try to code all of that. Now, the first thing I want to do is actually be able to display all of that to the user. So let's uh, let's write something out like that. Let's uh, make it a little a nice visual for the user. All right. Um, one is head, and lastly, something like this right here. And let's run that and let's see how that looks like. All right, so I could probably just delete from there and try that again all right so now we have something that looks like this so now the user know okay uh, zero represents tail one represents head and we're going to ask the user to now enter heads or tail all right put that down and we'll, we'll say system System.out.print enter heads or tails, head or tail. And of course, let's store that in an int data type, which we'll just simply call user input uh, input.next int. And after that, let's do a quick check. Let's make sure that the user actually entered zero for tail, one for head. So if user input equals zero or user input equals one, then we will flip the coin. Otherwise, we will end the program. And we'll say system.out.print uh, you did not enter the correct value exiting game. Okay, we don't want that to happen, right? Uh, let's just say zero. Okay, now let's run that and check, make sure everything works. So in this case, let's say two, right? Enter two and bam. So we only want the user to enter zero or one. And if you enter any other number besides that, it'll exit the game. Otherwise, if you did enter correctly, we're going to run the game within this if uh, curly braces right here. Now, we're going to create a variable that only exists within this if statement. All right. So let's call that variable our coin flip. Coin flip. And we're going to randomly generate a zero or a one. And to do that, we could use the math 
uh, math class random method. Now with this man random method, I'm going to multiply it by two. By multiplying it by two, I'm able to randomly generate a number. And then I'm going to tell that the range of this number is going to be a zero or a one. Right? After that, it's going to try to store that value into this coin flip variable. But I do have a small issue. Now the random method right here generates a number or a variable, actually I should say a data type uh, of double, right? Or double data type actually. And in this case, uh, that double data type is trying to store itself into a integer variable. So a data, double data type is just too large to be stored into an integer, integer uh, variable. So we're going to cast that double data type. Oops, not cast, not the word cast. Uh, cast that double data type as an integer. So uh, it could now be stored into this integer variable, right? So in case you get that error message, this is the reason right, if you're doing something similar. All right, now next is to say system.out.print flipping the coin and let's see all of that action make sure that works bam so we know that if you enter any other number right for example negative one you'll fail you did not enter a correct value exiting game or let's say exiting the game okay so what happened when you do enter the correct value well if you enter the correct value now it'll go into this if statement and it'll try to flip the coin so now flipping the coin and let's find out what did we flip thread dot sleep so actually let's uh let's try to make this uh program more interesting right we're going to flip that coin but we're going to pause just for a second we're going to tell this thread right here this program go into the thread and just pause for a second and we're going to pause for half a second right half a second milli milli for, for 1000 millisecond is one second all right unhandle exception oh i don't want to do exception handling so early so you know what hmm should i do it or should I ignore it? Hmm. I guess. I guess I don't want to do exception handling so early in the uh, exercise. So let's let's actually ignore that for now. All right. We're just going to flip that coin. And in this case, let's say uh, let's display. It. We'll say if um, if let's see coin flip equals equals zero then it will just we'll just scream out the print tails else well else what else could it be right heads of course heads all right now let's see let's run that into one Bam, flipping coin, flipping the coin, tails. Of course, I didn't do one more thing. And that's to say if you flip it correctly or not. In this case, I chose head, but the result was tails. So I would have been incorrect. So we could just do a simple check that says um, coin flip. If coin flip equals user input, then say you got it correct. System dot out dot print line you got it correct else what else could it be right <laughs> either you're correct or you're incorrect and let's take a look at the entire code and let's go back from the beginning from the beginning all this does right here is just simply to display a little uh, example with heads or tails now it'll say uh it'll say heads or tail it'll show that little bit 
and then we're going to ask the user to enter heads or tail. And of course, whatever the user enter, 0 or 1 hopefully, it will be stored into this variable called user input. Now, uh, after that, it's going to go to this next line of code that does a little check. Hey, if you enter 0 or 1, then we're going to play the game. But if you didn't enter 0 or 1, you enter something else, I'm going to let you know. Hey, you entered the incorrect value, so I can't continue the game. Because when I flip the coin, it's going to be a 0 or 1, and I can't compare 0 or 1 with any other number besides 0 or 1 to see if you're correct or not. So in that case, program ends. But if you did enter the value correctly, 0 or 1, then you could play the game, and I will randomly generate a 0 1 to simulate a coin flip. And I'll say, hey, flipping the coin, or maybe I could even say flip the coin before I generate it, just to be a little more <laughs> real or nice. So flipping the coin, generate that random 0 1, and I'll say, and I'll do a little check. If the coin flip equal equals 0, then, well, like I show up here, uh, the coin flip to be tails. Otherwise, on the only other scenario is if it generates a head and it'll display head. And after that, I do a little quick check. Coin flip, if coin flip is same as user input, then they're correct. Otherwise, they are incorrect. Okay, so let's try this twice. Let's enter zero first. And well, zero represents tail and the coin flipped the head. So when I compare that zero with heads, well, tail and heads, they're different. So I got it incorrect. Now let's try that one more time. And bam, this time I picked head and the coin flipped heads. So I got it correct. All right, so that's pretty much it for this exercise.